Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It's officially spring, look at the sky, the lake is looking beautiful, there's so many insects flying around, new buds on the trees and I've got so much to get on with but I literally am actually so excited for all of the work that I have because it's just a pleasure working here on this property, it just fills me with joy every single day. We're the Indie Project, B and Theo. In 2017, we bought an abandoned property in central Portugal and spent the last few years turning it into a fully fledged homestead, converting an old stone barn into a cozy tiny home. Working non-stop and overcoming many obstacles, it turned out better than we ever could have imagined. As one chapter closes, another one begins. Our dreams of living even more remotely in a fairy tale forest with space for animals to roam and our passions to grow became a reality. Before we have even moved there, it was devastated by a huge wildfire, drastically altering the landscape. Immense flash floods followed as the land couldn't hold onto the water. Follow us as we carve out our new life on Miracle Mountain. Yesterday, I went to the city to buy 100 meters of this piping. I actually went to three different cities to try and buy a brand new IBC tank, but nowhere had stock of them, which just seems absolutely crazy. I could find tons of secondhand ones that had glue stored in them, but I don't want to use a tank for drinking or for animals or for plants that has had glue stored in it. Look who's come to say hello. It's Gingy Bear. <laughs> In the end, I had to go to our off-grid property and pick up the old goat water tank that was in their enclosure. First thing I need to do is get this IBC tank out of the way so I can park up the trailer. And then once I've parked up the trailer, I can take the bike out. I brought the dirt bike over. It's not working at the moment, but I need to try and fix it. So like I mentioned, the bike's not working. So what I'm gonna do is just roll it all the way down the hill. The tires are quite flat, but it should make it. We will see. Let's see how this goes. Coming for a ride, Ginge. Gingy is absolutely loving this spring weather. Rolling around, but right, I gotta make a move. Head down to the garage. Hopefully the brakes are working. This is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> I can't wait to get it up and running. I'm hoping B can use it. I think she'd really enjoy it. Cruising around the land on a little dirt bike. But it's not actually little. It's quite heavy and it's quite big. So I reckon it'll fit her perfectly. Oh, I'm at the garage now. So the bike successfully made it to the garage. I've just come to check on the goats. How you doing? They're making good progress at this field, aren't you, Sweet Pea? And that is your official name now because everyone voted on it. Sweet Pea, you are now called. How are you doing? Go on, I've got some treats for you in a minute. Want some treats? I'm trying them out on some new stuff and they absolutely love it. It's like a mixture of stuff. we got sweet corn, different grains, all the stuff they love combined into one. Look, she'll go straight for that now. If you want goats to do what they're told, find a food they really enjoy. It's the best way, seriously. <laughs> I can't put it in the bucket if you're in the way. Watch out. Sweet pea. 
You're not going to get fed if you stand in the way. A bit more in there. So as I mentioned, springtime's already our favourite time of the year. But this spring is just so special because of the wildfire. I'm not going to lie, like, I definitely felt a little bit anxious coming into this spring because I just didn't know what to expect after the wildfire. And you can clearly see, you can clearly see how much it means to me to see some of the trees coming back because the grief that comes with going through something like this on top of other things that we've been through is just, it's just been a crazy couple years and yeah, this means a lot. So let me show you what's going on. Look how beautiful these purple and white wildflowers are rising up from a bed of ash. It's absolutely incredible what nature can achieve. And I could show you guys huge amounts of the forest where the trees are never going to survive. Huge amounts of our fruit orchards that are completely dead. But I'm going to focus on the positives as I always do and show you guys what's surviving because as I said springtime is incredible because this is when we get to see what has survived and these trees right here were burnt very badly and I can see ever so slightly some green leaves coming out right on the top of that tree which means there's still life so next year once it's been pruned properly right back give it a harsh prune that tree should fully recover which would just be amazing because I believe they are fruit trees from what I can remember the first time we visited the property. I'm just walking past a ton of olive trees and olive trees are super hardy trees. They can survive fires and all sorts of different environments and thrive in this heat. And these should produce some really nice olives. We've got a lot of pruning on the horizon for sure. I just thought of a cool idea that when bees knees better, we can walk around the property and film a video all about the different species of trees and fruit trees and the orchards that we have later on in the spring. So let me know if you'd like to see that video because there's tons of trees that we don't even know are here yet. So I've just noticed this tree that started to flower and it's really beautiful. You can see the bees on the flower. It's really nice. I've never noticed this one before. There's a huge tree here that looks like it's going to be a very fruitful tree, that's for sure. It's massive and I'm so excited to bring you guys along, picking all the fruit, canning, making all the things we can from the fruit and food on our own property. That's what it's all about. But look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I'm just walking up to the cherry orchard and I know there was a lot of comments about this on the last video and what is it? It's a crane. It's what they use to build the house with and I'm going to use it hopefully if I can get it back up and running to rebuild the old stone house on the property. I think that'd be a really cool project. It's currently growing through an orange tree so that needs to be rectified but I'm pretty sure it can be fixed. It doesn't look in that bad condition. The old owners left it behind and I'm happy to take it on. But this walk is just, it's outrageous. It's so nice. I just can't get over it. And I've just spotted, actually, I was gonna go left to the cherry orchard, but I've just spotted an amazing tree. I have no idea what it is, but we're gonna go and have a look. And if you know in the comments, let me know. Look at that tree behind me. How epic is that? And I would say it goes up a long way. I'd say that's probably about 25 foot high. So if you know in the comments, let me know what it is. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you closer. So there's this beautiful kind of white and pink flowered tree just before it. But then you can see here 
how nice is this? It's proper incredible and we've never seen it flowered like this before. Goes all the way around. Wow. And some of them on the ground are not quite open yet. But I'm sure in a couple of weeks time they'll be fully open and just looking even nicer. And the variety of trees here just blows my mind. Check this one out. <laughs> How cool is that? I wouldn't mind a few more of these dotted around the property. Really beautiful, but right now I've just arrived at the cherry orchard and I can already see that some of these trees are starting to flower, which is amazing because the cherries that we got last season were just brilliant and you can do so much with cherries. Me and B both love cherries. So to have a cherry orchard, or I think we've got three cherry orchards, I think 200 and something cherry trees. And they're, they're really substantial cherry trees. You can see there's a couple here that won't make it. That one is dead by the looks of things. But some of these big ones, they could do with a big prune all in due course. Next year, we will focus our time and energy on pruning. This one doesn't look that healthy, but maybe at the top, there might be a few buds that will come out. Yes, I can see just there. It's a little bit of green. So that would really help having a big, harsh prune on it to get all the fruit possible out of it for the coming years but they look incredible as they are we don't need tons and tons of cherries we just need enough for our own consumption but how nice is that so pretty i can't wait until they're all in blossom and i can fly the drone over and show you guys how it looks from above so i've just moved the utv next to the ibc because i need to move it halfway up the mountain because I have a project that I need to get done ASAP and I'll explain more when I get up there, but I need to try and get that IBC in the back here on my own, which is gonna be a little bit tricky. B can't help me, her leg is absolutely screwed at the moment. So she's inside the house doing some work and resting up. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Ah. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah. And I'm on. Strap it down and get up the mountain. Trying to kill two birds with one stone and see if this piping will fit on at the same time. I'm not so sure, because it's absolutely massive. But we'll see. Save two trips. I reckon if I tie it on from the back, it might be okay. <laughs> it's so heavy, I don't even know how to load it on. <sighs> oh. Oh, that's not bad. Strap around there. Jobs are good. Oh.
I've just arrived at the destination where the pond is going to be re-dug out. That's the next major project. But before I do that, I need to re-establish one of the pipes that got damaged in the fire. There's a pipe that goes from that pond that I think if you come with me over here, you can see this pipe here goes under the ground and into the pond and it goes half a kilometer around all the way to the bottom of our land. And I need to reinstate that pipe before I start digging out the pond. And I've mentioned it before, but it's crazy how much stone and silt is now covering this pond area. And I'm so excited to dig it out. It's gonna be such an amazing place to spend time. I'm definitely gonna build a nice little pontoon on it, stock it full of fish. It'll be an incredible environment for wildlife as well. And the stream comes down from the valley. And what I need to do is divert that water into this tank and then away from this area as much as possible. So when I dig this pond out, I've not got it filling up with water constantly, which would be a real big pain. There is lots of different areas where water's coming into this pond. So it's gonna take a, a little bit to get it working and make sure all of the water is diverted before I dig it out. But let's start. So I parked on a slope to make this much easier. I'm getting this pipe and the tank off. See if it works. Gravity is my friend. There we go. So I managed to trace the pipe back from the pond and it comes out here and then it goes underground for half a kilometer and then pops out again, further down the land where it's melted again. So you can see here the damage, all of these fixtures and fittings are no longer usable because they're just melted on. So yesterday while I was in the city, I brought some more pipe and I brought all the fittings I should need and we should be good to start linking it all together. If I come a little bit further up, you can see all of the uh, erosion from the water and I'll build this back up eventually. But for now, I just need to basically plumb into this pipe and run another pipe about 80 meters up the stream so that I've got the water going into it and bypassing the pond. Whilst Theo's outside doing work on the digger, I'm gonna be doing some baking. I'm still stuck at home with my injured knee, although it's a lot more comfortable now. And thank you all so much for your well wishes. I appreciate it a lot. I'm still hobbling around, but I'm managing to walk around a lot easier, which is wonderful because it means I can get doing stuff in the house. And we actually had my mom come and stay recently. And it was so lovely to have her here. She's actually gonna be looking after the place in June when we go to Alaska. And we're actually doing two trips whilst we're there, two exciting, adventurous hiking trips. So if you wanna come along with us, I will put a link in the description. It's gonna be amazing. We're heading out from Anchorage, going into Denali, going on wildlife cruises. It really is gonna be an adventure to remember. But my mom got settled in here and is ready to look after the place when we're away. And while she was here, it was also my birthday. So she cooked us a beautiful birthday cake. And I've actually got some 
buttercream left over. I forgot what it was called then. So I thought I'd make some fairy cakes. I've not made them for a really long time. They will be gluten-free as well. So gluten-free cooking is a tiny bit different to normal cooking, but I'm just gonna try and make them as tasty as possible and use up this leftover buttercream because we've actually got quite a lot. <laughs> It's a simple recipe, and as you can see, it's got simple ingredients. I found it, I think, on the BBC Good Food website, so I can put a link in the description. The sugar gave me a nightmare. It all clumped at the bottom of the jar. So as you can see, I've had to literally do it in two bits. There's nothing quite as fulfilling for me than making this cake. It just reminds me of being a child. I used to bake so much with my mom, I loved it. It's been a long time since I've done some baking like this and it's really nice for me to just focus on it. it takes my mind off my injury and gives me something to work on. It's also really wholesome to be able to cook with your own eggs. I love that the chickens provide us with eggs and I can use them in our cooking. It really is such a nice feeling and one of the things I love about having our own homestead. The cakes went in the oven for about 20 minutes and then when I took them out, it was a bit of a surprise. Now I'm sure you're all just as shocked as I am. <laughs> of this cake. Yes, I realized when I got out of the oven, I used uh, normal flour, not self-raising flour. So I've got some really nice smelling, basically cake biscuits. So <laughs> I'm not gonna waste them. I'm still gonna use them. This is the buttercream left over from my birthday cake that my mom made. It's still perfectly good. I have been having little bits of it here and there, which is why I'm making the cake. So the cake, <laughs> not really a cake. And then we've got some jam. It's gonna be a nice, simple, Victoria sponge. Yes, I forgot to say as well. These aren't fairy cakes. I realized I don't have a fairy cake tin or fairy cake holders. So I made a Victoria sponge that is not a Victoria sponge. So this is my weird cake and I'm gonna try and flatten it off by cutting <laughs> the little raised bit. Uh, yeah, this is just a very interesting experience and I've got to say whenever I've done any kind of baking on YouTube it always doesn't go to plan. I'm going to see if I can find some other videos where I've done baking before and it's just gone horribly wrong. When I'm not filming myself I like to think I'm a pretty good baker. I literally made bread a few weeks ago. Bread for the first time ever. Gluten-free as well so but yeah what a fool. Now 
nearly flat. <laughs> I still can't get over this. This is just hilarious. And also actually, these little scraps, I think I will probably feed to the chickens because if you don't have chickens, I suggest getting some because they're so good at eating your leftovers. So what I'm gonna do now, put the scraps there, scoop out loads of this delicious buttercream. I need a spoon. Oh. Okay, so I actually left it outside of the fridge. So it's at room temperature. So it's a lot more pliable right now. Let's see. There we go, it's spreading on nicely. I feel like I'm gonna need quite a lot of this to compensate for the flat cake. Basically it is a pancake cooked in the oven, an extra thick one. But this is uh, you know something, this is a little trick. You can polish a turd. I'm polishing one right now. <laughs> I'm just, you know what? I'm really curious how it's actually gonna taste because, because it's flat and not risen, it's obviously not gonna be really airy, which a sponge cake should be. Now, should I, if I put this that way, the top is flat and it doesn't look as ugly. So I'll just put the remainder on here. Scoop you on, there we go. And then slather it with jam. Okay, put the lid back on that. Still got loads of buttercream left over, so I guess I'm gonna have to try and make a proper cake in the future. Put that on there. Don't have tons of jam left, but I think it should be enough for this cake. So I'm just gonna actually, you know what, to get some on my finger. All right, spread that out. I tell you what, simple cakes are the best cakes. <laughs> you can't be a good old sponge. I know this isn't a sponge, I'm gonna pretend it is. A good Victoria sponge cake, oh, simple. And what I like to do with my leftover jam jars like this, I put some oats in there and milk and have overnight oats tomorrow with it. So here we go. <laughs> looking cute <laughs> and for the final touch i'm actually going to dust some icing sugar on here so let me just find that here we go icing sugar now the key is to not dump it all in one spot okay i've officially Polished a turd. The aspen petals line the trail we paved. Just two kids trying to find their own way. My dusty shoes have helped me realize love's forged in the climb. Like a cool drink of water on a summer afternoon Like a fog clearing out a little time mountain view A breeze that whispers love will make it through It makes me feel brand new One moment with you So long, familiar flowers paint the ground that we walk on. Our wandering hearts have grown more intertwined. Our love's more sweet with time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited because B just sent me a message to say that she's baking a cake. I've been out all day working on the digger and with a spade. I'm knackered, the sun has just gone behind the mountain. And let me show you what I've been up to. First of all, how nice is this looking? Little stone wall on top of the piping. 
And then just above here, there's loads of stones for a French drain. So all of the water will trickle into that, run under here, and then be able to go into the pipe. But what I've mostly been doing today is fixing that water pipe that's half a kilometer long, and I'm right at the end of the pipe here. And here it is, I've completely fixed it. I've put two new joins and some new pipe. This is the old pipe and you can see in the fire it completely warped it and there was loads of holes. This joins completely melted together and there's a big hole there. So all of the water was gushing out of there, which let me know that the pipe was good all the way down from the dam to this point. And once I fix this point, the water is working nicely. How beautiful does a UTV look parked in the meadow full of the wildflowers? So now we're gonna go up to the dam area where I'm gonna show you what I've been working on mostly today. Okay, so the first thing I've done is dig out an area that was completely filled in when we had the flooding after the fire, and it's looking really good. This part of the job that I did today felt like being a teenager back in the forest building dirt jumps. I've dug this down about three feet and gave it a really nice curve, and there is actually a French drain pipe that runs all the way down here and collects all of the water, and then it runs into this area here, this big concrete basin. So a really good job done. You can see how long it is from where the digger and the UTV are parked and it looks way better. Once all this regrows with grass, it will look really nice again. But another good job done. Let me show you the next thing. So the next thing I've done is super temporary until the big JCB comes in to dig out this dam. Got a really nice collection of stones there, but you can see I've trenched this whole area for the water to run all the way down here and divert around where the dam is going to be dug out. And let me just reiterate, this is temporary. So it runs all the way down here and then goes into this solid pipe. And then it runs into a pipe which goes into this IBC, it splits off and goes all the way down to the bottom of the land where I showed you I'd fix the pipe down there. And I've also fitted an overflow. So any water that comes in here and is not being used goes right back into the lake. So we're always keeping water on the property. And as I mentioned, this is very temporary until the dam is fully dug out and working again but it's super important to me to keep as much water on the property as possible. So that is what I have achieved. I'm super stoked with it. I've got so much done in a short amount of time and I'm looking forward to getting out on the tractor really soon. So make sure you stay tuned. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm gonna go and eat cake. <laughs>